Welcome. My name is Natalie Jeté, and I'm a neurologist at the University of Calgary in Canada. I'm going to talk to you today about disparities in healthcare and the treatment gap in North America. Disparities in healthcare refer to the systematic differences in the use or receipt of healthcare services between groups of people who have comparable needs for these services. The epilepsy treatment gap is slightly different, on the other hand. It's defined as the number of people with active epilepsy who need appropriate treatment for it, but who do not get it. Typically, the treatment gap measures underutilization in terms of the lack of available appropriate drug therapies, but the gap can be derived from any services, such as diagnostic services, investigations, or the availability of specialized therapies, such as epilepsy surgery. The treatment gap is usually measured using the direct method, where you identify a population-based sample of people with epilepsy, and then directly determine the proportion who are not receiving treatment. The indirect method is much less commonly used, and it compares prevalence data on cases to the estimated number of people on treatment. And how do we estimate the number of people on treatment? Well, we usually look at the number of anti-epileptic drugs sold in an area divided by the defined daily dose. And the defined daily dose is the assumed average maintenance dose per day for an anti-epileptic drug in an adult. Now let's look at a few examples of disparities in care and treatment gap in North America. This is a study examining sociodemographic disparities in care in 560 patients with epilepsy who were seen at, two, at several clinics in New York City and Houston. The authors found that those who were of Hispanic and African American race had higher odds of visiting a generalist being seen in the emergency department or being hospitalized, but at a significantly lower odds of being seen by a specialist compared to a people of other races. This is concerning because if they are not seeing specialists, there's always the worry that they may be misdiagnosed or inappropriately treated, and as a result, this may result in a treatment gap. This is a Canadian population based study using administrative data examining health resource utilization over a one-year period we found that those who were aboriginal were significantly more likely to be hospitalized, visit the emergency room, but they were significantly less likely to see a neurologist. This was quite unexpected in a country like Canada where there is universal health care. Now let's talk a little bit about the treatment gap now. These are data from a systematic review examining population-based study addressing the epilepsy treatment gap. They looked at studies published between 1987 and 2007. Here we see the treatment gap for those uh, studies which examined patients with active epilepsy. And you can see that there's great variations between countries and also within countries, with reported treatment gap of around 10% in rural USA being slightly lower in urban USA, around 6 to 7%. Now, what about the surgical gap in epilepsy? This is now a study looking at 565 patients who underwent a detailed pre-surgical evaluation. And what the authors found is that those who were of Hispanic or African American race were less likely to have surgery compared to people of other races. There are many factors which can explain the treatment gap, such as healthcare system factors, but there are also patient factors. For example, a physician may miss a diagnosis or prescribe the wrong treatment or not offer treatment to a patient. There are also patient-related factors, such as fear of side effects. Perhaps a patient may want to seek alternative uh, and ineffective treatment. Or there's the cost of treatment. Perhaps a patient does not have health insurance. In conclusion, the treatment gap extends beyond the availability of appropriate drug therapies. We must also consider the diagnostic gap, investigation gap, and the treatment gap, both in terms of medical and surgical therapies and other specialized therapies. Treatment gaps and disparities exist even in high-income countries, such as Canada and the United States, or even in countries where universal health care is available, such as in Canada. More research is needed to explore reasons for these gaps in order to address them more effectively.